So to begin with, the wood I'm using is Alaskan yellow cedar. Um, it turns really well, finishes nice and smooth. And I'm just measuring how long I want the piece to be and just kind of get the length. Now I'm just marking the center, getting it ready to put in the lathe and begin turning it. Uh, just setting up some lights so it'd be better to film. Uh, just blowing off some of the dust and getting the lathe squared away with so it'll fit the piece in there properly. Here I'm just selecting the right pattern. In uh, this case it's a small swimmer. Now I'm just making sure everything's lined up before I start turning. And here I'm measuring out how thick the plug is going to be. I think in this case it's one and a quarter inches. Now I'm just milling it down so that it's all even all the way across. And I'm just setting how deep the bit can go. Just checking it. I think I just need to take off a hair bit more. And perfect. Now I'm just setting it to the thickest part. And now that once I've done this, everything's set up and ready to go, and I could just start cranking them out. Now that all the turning's done, it's going to be pretty rough, so I'm just going to sand it out. The more sanding you do on the lathe, the more time it's going to save you in the long run with hand sanding. I used three different grits of sandpaper. At first I hit it with the uh, 120, then 180, and then 220 just to smooth it all out. Now I'm just getting a finished plug that... Uh, doesn't have any paint on it, so I can measure out where the eyes and the weights and the swivel goes. Just marking everything I need to know, like where to cut the ends off and where to drill the holes. First thing I usually drill are the eye holes. For that I use a Falsner bit just because uh, it's really just gives you a clean cut for you uh, to stick the eyes in there later on. Then I drill the swivel and the weight hole just measuring out the uh, appropriate size drill to use for the weight. And there's the plug before I cut the ends off with the eyes and the swivel hole and the hole for the weight. Now I'm just cutting the ends off the plug. Um, before I drill it through, um, this is just how I do it. A lot of people through bore the plug before they even turn it on the lathe, but I just always have problems doing that with the drill swerving all over the place and this way just for me is faster so everybody has their own way of doing it but this is just how I do it and to find the center of the plug I just eyeball it and I have pretty good luck doing it that way here I'm just getting it set up to drill through I don't drill through all at once I drill one hole in from the nose and one through the tail and they meet in the middle where the swivel goes through.
Now I'm just going to use a hand drill to clear out the holes. Like I said before, I drill one hole in from the tail and one from the nose and have them meet in the middle. And it goes through perfectly. Here's the plug so far. Now I just need to cut the slot for the lip. I have this little jig. That peg goes into the swivel hole to give it a nice straight cut. If I was doing, if I was sawing a lot of slots, I would put like a fence up on the side just to give it a really straight cut. But since I'm just doing this one, I'd figure. It's really a point, and there it is. Lip fits perfectly in there. Now I'm just going to set the belly weight for this. I am just going to use some Gorilla Glue. I like to put a wire in there, a little piece of one, so it doesn't completely clog the hole and the weight doesn't slip down farther in there. So here we are, the glue is dry. Uh, just taking out the set wire, drilling out the hole of excess glue, and now all I have to do is wood putty over it just to smooth out the uh, divot where the weight is. All right, so here we are the following day. The wood putty is dry. Now I'm just sanding it down um, to smooth out the bump. So I just blew all the dust out of it. Now I'm just sticking in a wire I bent in half. Uh, has a loop on the end of it so I can hang it up after I'm done sealing it. Uh, for a sealer, I just use spar urethane cut with some mineral spirits and I'm just gonna dip it in and just get it on the inside best as I can and uh, then brush off all the uh, excess with a chip brush just uh, to have it dry quicker and uh, let it sit overnight. So here we are about a week later and uh, it's dry and now I'm going to do is give it a light sanding with 220 grit just so it takes the paint. Just wipe the dust off it and now I'm heading outside to put the primer on. For this I'm using Rust-Oleum 2X, uh, I just like to use this because it covers well, and uh, I'm using the white semi-gloss. Now after a light dusting of paint, I'm just letting it hang up to dry. So here we are, the priming coat is dry, and it'll be a little gritty, uh, so I'm just giving it a very light sanding with 220. Now I'm going to give it the final top coats. Um, I do two, just to uh, get it a little more glossy and uh, cover up any uh, wood grain that might be showing through. And also doing two lighter coats instead of one thick one will cut down on drips. And then I'm going to let it dry for 48 hours. So here we are a couple days later, the spray paint is dry and now it's time to start airbrushing. Uh, first I'm just going to add some scales to it, uh, going to be using some pearl to add some flash to the plug. Um, that mesh is from a bra bag, it's like what women use to wash their uh, underwear and delicates in 
and uh, just give it a little little dusting and then uh, I'm going to dry with a hair dryer just so uh, when I take it off um, there's no smears or smudges. So here we are. Uh, you can see the scales add a little bit of uh, flash and life to the lure. And now I'm just kind of blending it together um, and uh, painting like the cheeks of it a solid color and stuff like that. Um, now I'm just going to let it dry uh, for a couple minutes and on to the next color. Now I'm painting the back uh, a nice yellowy gold. Uh, I sprayed the outline of what I paint first and then uh, fill in the rest from there. So I'm going to let that dry and here we are a couple minutes later um, after I rinsed out the airbrush and stuff. Uh, now I'm just hitting with a little dab of pink under the chin and going to let that dry now. So here we are. The final color I'm going to paint is black. Um, I'm just going to spray a couple dots on it and uh, do a little black overspray around the eyes just to really uh, tie it all together and give it some life. So here we are the following day. The paint's dried. I've signed the back of it there and ran a small piece of wire through it to hook on to the wheel. Here are the eyes I'm using. In this case, they're half inch stick on eyes. I got those off eBay for a couple bucks, but you can get them anywhere online. Now I'm going to apply the epoxy with an acid brush, just picking out the loose hairs. Uh, you get these from Harbor Freight for like a couple bucks for a hundred of them. Um, now I'm just going to start applying the epoxy um, with smooth, even strokes uh, to minimize the bubbles. And don't forget to get into the eye as well to seal them in there. And uh, just be careful with how much you put on because then drips will start to form and uh, you don't want that. So here we are. I've got a nice even coat of epoxy on there. Just trying to smooth out any bubbles or drips that there might be. And then I'm just going to turn the wheel on and let it dry. So here we are, the epoxy is fully cured and it's looking nice and glossy at this point. Here I'm just going to epoxy in the belly grommet. That's that right there. All the grommet does is protect the wood from uh, getting marred up by the swivel when a fish is thrashing around on it. I'm just using two ton epoxy. You can get this at any hardware store. Now I'm just mixing it up. The epoxy is fully mixed. Now I'm just applying a small amount in the hole with a toothpick, shoving the grommet in, and then wiping off any excess that's in the hole so it doesn't clog up the uh, through wire hole. And now I'm just going to let that dry for a couple hours. Here's the rest of the hardware. That's just a metal lip, and I cut the hook and crimped it on to the swivel instead of using split rings. It's stronger, and also then you don't have to buy split rings. There's the lip on the wire, 
Now I'm just threading the wire through the center of the plug and hooking the other end of the swivel onto the wire as it passes through. And there it goes. Now all I have to do is just shove the tail grommet down the back of the wire and into the tail of the plug. Now it's time to make the tail loop that the hook will hang off of. First I'm just going to angle the wire up like that and then I'm going to take my wire looping pliers and start to form the loop. Okay, so the loop has been formed. Now I'm just going to tighten it all together. The trick here is to just keep getting the next layer of wire underneath the last wrap, and that'll just cinch everything together. So here's the finished tail wrap. Now all I have to do is just snip off the tag end wire as close to the base of the wrap as I can. All that's left to do now is just squeeze on the tail hook. I tied this up last night just for this lure. And we are done.